Dolls. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye to November. I want to release an episode that literally is just hello, goodbye, and then I, that's we've, it. We've talked about that before. I think it would actually be our most listened to episode. The Certainly. downloads would go through the roof. If someone sees a 10 second episode, they're like, that's the only thing. People I'll... would be like, you have to listen to this podcast episode. It's f- incredible. And I wanna, it's 10 seconds. I want to thank everyone for making Sexy Unique Pod their top Spotify listen of the year. I want that podcast episode to chart, like climb the Apple <laughs> charts and be number one. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've gotten some amazing uh, messages where people are showing off that we are their number one. And my most favorite one was Yolanda Fister. We were his number two most listened to. Thank God. And then his number thir- three is Joe Rogan. And he went, no, I swear. I, <laughs> I just listened to the UFO episodes. It's fine. I know. I mean, what are you going to do? Well, he has some good episodes. Also, Yolanda Fister can do whatever she wants. Guess what? Sometimes you just need to listen to Joe Rogan. I get it. He's the... Number one podcast in the world for a reason. I've never actually, and I'm not just saying this. You've never be, actually listened. I've seen clips on Twitter, <laughs> but I've never actually listened to his pod. Well, I think. I'm not, I'm not just saying I that to be like. I think most people Meh. haven't, and they just get on some sort of hate train because everyone else is like, he's so blah, blah, blah. But I actually listened to like a few episodes because I was like, damn, this guy sounds like alt-right neo-nazi if you like follow certain people online you're like he is the second coming of hades himself and i listened and i was like what are i don't understand what people are so mad about well the only thing that makes me mad is that his episodes are like seem to be like seven hours long and i'm like i'm not doing that so that that's like where i'm i draw the line at over two hours but if you have a draw a long drive or like a long yeah, stint in the true. kitchen or cleaning or like kitchen. a task in the clink yeah yeah then a two hour plus episode comes in handy well i openly listen to my problematic king tim dylan so that's my he's probably my most listened to pot of the year i haven't checked yeah definitely he's no Dylan one, Nation. No one funnier. <laughs> Dylan Nation. Haven't seen Thanksgiving yet. Oh, I saw it. Is it fun? It was fun, yeah. It's Eli Roth, right? Mm-hmm. It's really like over the top, campy, mm-hmm. blood yeah. and gore. I did have a nightmare about one part of it Which the part? following night. Um, spoiler. This is a spoiler okay. alert. But they bake a woman like a Thanksgiving turkey and then they like serve her baked body on a platter. Whom's? One of the people. Oh my god, that's really scary. I know, and I had I, a, I had a nightmare that her like baked body was oh, like stop. crawling around, and that really shook me. That's really. I get really triggered. I'm starting to get. I I don't like like on Thanksgiving. I was thinking about how they pardon a turkey at the White House, mm-hmm. and I think that's cruel. It's a joke. To slap in the face to all the other turkeys. To like trot animals out. Just, just only one is spared. Massacre. Out of like all the turkeys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't like that kind of that is very cannibal cop coded to me. Which remember that story about the cop in New York who? Yeah, obviously. Truly, I still have like if I even hear that those two words together, my stomach drops. I get really freaked out because of what he was wanting to do Mm -hmm. like literally bake bake women in the oven and bake like put them on in a stew i just that cannibal stuff i can't deal with well then i would avoid thanksgiving well i will certainly see it because addison ray is in it and tim she's really good and he's really good okay i'm ready okay it's just like it takes place in plymouth yeah and it's a real takedown of mass holes which i like like it's making fun of like massachusetts people and they need a good ribbing Eli. I love that. And it's making fun of like America, right? Kind of, but it's also just like a Thanksgiving yeah. themed horror movie. That is funny because I remember I remember watching that trailer in Grindhouse and being like, this is the funniest thing ever. That fake trailer. That's where it comes from. Did you know that? Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, this is like 15 years ago now, but that was, oh, this is what that is. I'm happy about that. I think Eli might have even directed the fake trailer in the, turn, in the Grindhouse. So. But I remember being like, crying laughing as a teen watching that and being like this needs to be a movie Mm -hmm. well now guess what your dreams have come true um should we recap mother god a little 
yeah the final one i was just gonna say like i'm really devastated oh. that i haven't seen napoleon yet i haven't either like i really want to see napoleon i'm going and no back one and wants to see napoleon with me and this has been my biggest struggle this thanksgiving holiday my favorite thing about napoleon around la is the billboards that the writer somehow got his name like in the biggest font on the whole thing david sarpa and i was like work good for their lawyers mm-hmm they really got off their ass and someone said, we're going to put the big font mm -hmm. on the billboards for you, Mr. Scarpa. Or we will sue you or we will sue Ridley Scott. Um, I, yeah, I just really am dying to see Napoleon, but I like am having a hard time bringing myself to go it alone. How long is it? Like four hours? No, I'm sure it's like two plus. I can handle that. Like I'm literally a walking Phoenix super fan. You are. Um, I'm biding my time till Folie a Deux with him. I need to like save up for that because I'm that's going to be my movie. Yeah. I just am like, I'll watch anything he does. Like I'd watch him like lick a wall for two hours. Yeah. I, so it, it probably will be a solo journey after everything's said and done, which is fine. Yeah. I would pay to be wall in the wall watching Joaquin and Rooney just talk in their home. Yeah, I don't have much of an interest in their like personal life. I just together. want to see for like an hour what they are like. Together. It seems kind of serious. I think they're very intense and they talk about intense things at all times. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think they're lolling. I don't think there's many lols. No, and I think that <laughs> scares me. Like it to be around just very serious people who like don't lol is actually a fate worse than death at times. Well, then they're perfect for each other. Yeah. Well, definitely. I mean, like non lawlers should only procreate mate and partner with other non lawlers and take everyone off the table for the lawlers which is probably why Joaquin and Gaga it seems like they were worked well together because I don't I she's my listen she's my queen and she lolls at times but she's mostly very intense mm -hmm. so I think he liked that probably she's a serious Sally mm-hmm yeah but we'll see i uh well i hope i hope that hope you're not good. deprived of napoleon the good news is that i have all the agency in the world and can go see it at any given time the good news is there's a movie theater my the good news is i might even just go see it tonight it's just like the amc grove solo journey of it all actually i know someone who would probably go see it with me so never mind don't or feel bad for me well, I don't. If anyone was feeling really bad for me and sad just now, just realize that I just realized how I'm the... gonna see solve this problem, and I'm gonna figure out how to see Napoleon. And I do have someone I can reach out to who will it's... likely see it. And if it's that kind of... doesn't happen, <laughs> hold please. If that doesn't happen, then I will figure out a way to see it myself. So actually, crisis averted. It's giving my. I have a girlfriend at summer camp. Mm -hmm. It's giving... It's giving yeah. George Glass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving you walking into Landmark Theater with... Two tickets. I guess they didn't show up. <laughs> oh, Where yeah, are they? Coming, Can I leave late. this with you? And if they show up, mm -hmm. d just pass them in. They'll be here soon. It's under my name. Mm -hmm. um, no, I hope you find that. I'm, I'm dying to see Anatomy of a Fall and well you better get over get into it it's the been zone out. of interest no it hasn't anatomy of a fall has it yes oh it's in theaters doll that's been oh, in I, thought theaters. It was just, I thought it, was it might be out, out now because i oh. saw it when it was like in you liked it right oh i loved it okay and i zone of interest <laughs> look at that pig um i have to say i had a moment yesterday i was listening to a podcast and this guy was talking about like uh the decimation of like animal life talk about no lols what do you mean like, like extinction yeah just talking about like the the animal farm like factory farm industrial complex and i'm like i can't not have meat i love it like i i need protein for mm -hmm. meat but when i hear people talk about it i immediately want to like drive my car into a building and like be vegan like I get like, I get 
such anxiety and I feel so devastated when I hear if I so it's like yeah it's horrifying the line between like my threshold is like if someone even mentions pig in a form I immediately go because ah! I just like I, I'm such a weak link I can't deal with like what I can't deal with the slaughter I, I can't deal with the slaughter and just like the the factory farms and the slaughterhouses and like corralling them and like it just and it it's like sometimes i'm like uh, i all all signs point to vegan for me but i'll never do it yeah and it like depressed like that's what i was thinking about that like on thanksgiving like with turkeys and stuff it just it it's like i'm so sensitive to it but like i'm not gonna not <laughs> contribute to it mm -hmm. i know it's my truth it's horrible but like i'm just gonna live with it yeah well welcome no i know i had this moment like probably five or six years ago where really? i read something like really looked into it yeah mostly just like the like the p negative effects on climate that all of the factory farming has like emissions and stuff yeah and it really stressed me out and then i was like well what am i gonna do yeah and you i kind was of... like i'm not gonna do anything no that's exactly what i'm doing yeah which is nothing but but everyone must go through that realization period at some point in their life mm -hmm. so congratulate what if like streamers came down i push a button it's like boo, 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 boo. Mm -mm. You had er, the, er, meat, er. the factory farming realization. Er, er, er. Congratulations. Totally taken 34 years. They go, Carrie, they, a news truck pulls up. A woman gets out. She goes, all right, set camera. Okay, three, two, one. I'm Kaylee Lowell here today with ABC News, where Carrie O'Donnell has recently <laughs> learned like, about factory farming. <laughs> they go, Carrie. Yes. What do you think you're going to do now that you know all the pros and cons of factory farming? Have you made your decision? I have. What, and what is that going to be? To do nothing. Incredible. Another person who has decided to do nothing. Thanks so much. Thank you. And then they just pack up and leave. Yeah. And I get a ribbon. Yeah. I mean. Just the way it is. What are you supposed to do? Just eat nut cheeses? No. F no. I'm not. Speaking of vegan. We need to talk about Mother God, the, this final, is the final chapter. The final chapter. Again, this is a spoiler if you haven't listened. Just fast forward to when we recap. But. I'm really sad that it's over. I am surprised that it was only three episodes. I could have watched... I need a spinoff episode of about every single cult member. Their upbringing, their path to Mother God's cult, and like what they're up to now. Like They each need three episodes. Was it not so perfect that within a year, all of them had completely disbanded and like did their own thing like well, it they're was doing so... their own things no i know but i'm saying it's so fitting it's such an it's like typical you well, know but I mean? they don't have mother god to like no i know it's sad it's just like she was the only thing keeping them in that she's the tie that binds um i want to spin off of father god and father multiverse i love their like basically platonic gay life partnership together in wisconsin do you think that they f every once in a while maybe i think so. i think that they've in front of each other definitely with, with mother and i think they maybe like stroke together i think they have sex every once in a while but it's like not gay it's like father it's like father son it's bonding. father son i think that they really like i think they were really the truest love story of the whole thing was like they found each other and they and you would think that they would have the most contentious relationship but they were actually at the end it was like this beautiful like male love for each other yeah Holly um, vibes. I thought I did love that Holly, aka Ashley, reunited with her Bostonian mother. Yeah. I thought that was sweet. Her mullet mom. I think that scene at the end when she's talking to her mom and she was talking about how much she misses Mother God, I think she was actually talking about Earth Mother. Yes and no. I think that she probably really does miss mother god and misses the person who gave her life so much meaning and that was like a really that was like her best friend my favorite moment is when she goes live and only seven people are watching and she's like god damn it only seven i was like that's me yeah i was really thrown by her lack of engagement for like how much live streaming they were doing and like how chronically online they truly were uh, their lack of engagement was earth shattering. But here's 
okay here's my like kind of they needed a producer to really like streamline their content and like focus on audience engagement michael slash miguel was not that no he was just like an embezzler he was a thief Um, i need to say though like here's my little like hot take is like she if you think about it she did sort of die for all of us and in her death she ended up seeing the fruits of her labor post death, but now she is world known and she got what she wanted in death. And she died basically with humiliating social media engagement. (laughs) (laughs) She did. She went through, she literally turned gray blue and turned into the dumpster monster from a hole and drive worse, worse. And like, rotted her fucking face and body from outside from with into inside only to die a horrible death but now she's like on hbo max <laughs> she's never I been more famous take. i so love I'm like, that she take. kind of did die for our sins she was she she, the mother was a martyr something i think that <laughs> she died for the likes but and there were no likes to be found <laughs> She de- She got fame post-death. As many do. I don't know if an HBO like docuseries was what she was ideally craving. <laughs> no, I think she was craving like... But at least something happened. It was not in vain. My hot take is that I want like all my friends to ride as hard for me as they rode for Mother God. My favorite was when she was... Okay, not my... I mean, when they go to Hawaii and she's just drinking Mai Tais and... Love and life. And then when she <laughs> declares herself Pele, which is like the most sacred of Hawaiian gods, like you, you have need to, be to, you have to be really, really <laughs> up to get like all the Hawaiians to band together to run you off of their island, to throw things at you, to throw things at you, and literally run you out of town. Like you really have to piss some people off. Yeah, especially Kauai is a very like kooky live and let live type of vibe no you don't you don't don't come for Pele you don't get to come your blue bony ass up in Kauai call yourself Pele and like live to see the day no she had to go she simply had to go (laughs) but that was like and I loved (laughs) I love when they're shouting like of course there were some like loud white women being like taking (laughs) this taking the soapbox away from the actual like native Hawaiians but she when they're screaming at her house you just hear her you don't see her but you hear her like a, a clip of her going god damn it i'm just getting f- it's like, i am i like relate damn it she could have used a little clarity um she could have been she could have sobered up and gotten a little clarity and maybe like a business coach or a strategy coach to like help her a crisis. She needed. P- she needed she like need crisis PR. She needed like Raquel's PR people. You can't just like go be calling herself Pele when people hate you. You gotta read the room a little bit. Like a good cult leader reads the room a bit and pivots. Come up with your own god. Don't take. Yeah. Don't take like an actual god. Um, I think you can't do it to like indigenous people on their own land. No, whose land has been like literally like pillaged you should say by white like, people. If you're going to like Hawaii and you want to claim like another god, you should be claiming that you're like Allah, like somewhere that doesn't like piss them off, but would definitely piss other people off. But you're not in those other people's zones, so mm. you can be that. Would be like, don't worry, it. Whatever you think, I'm not Pele. I think too that she could have been saved in Hawaii. Like I think if she had stayed in Hawaii, she might have gotten better. Um. No? Maybe. I mean, if... It's pretty wild that she was literally she, poisoning herself with silver. Like, it's... That's just... But she's pretty cooked, like, from booze. I mean, I don't know how you bounce back from degenerative liver failure. It was sad that at the end, all she wanted was her family. Like, Her you, real family. You do have to... I think if you start to show signs of fatty liver, like, you can reverse it if you stop drinking... But once it gets to like 
a certain stage, I'm pretty sure you're just then like you're at that stage of liver failure and you should stop drinking. But like, I don't think she was ever getting more sober over time. No, but it's also like, then you're, then you're like, I mean, I guess that's like the whole moral quandary. It's like, then you're sort of like, everyone should be tried with murder because they all were, they were like, mother's ascending. Like, she, no mother, you got to die. She's like, I just want to be back. She wanted that too. Like that. She did want and that, she, but and it's complicated. The it's way compli- that they told him what I love about it is it's like very layered because she, it's really like, you got exactly what you wanted. You got to be the leader of these people. They will do anything you say. And like, you got to booze it up. You got to booze it up. You got to party. <laughs> But then also you lost so much that and these people only know you as this one thing. So like whatever you say that's against that, yeah. they're not going to believe it. And they yeah. want like they want you to be this thing. And ultimately you kind of want that too. But I th- but she also I think her she was conflicted because at the end she she was the seam like the seams were showing and she was like damn i just want my mom i and mean i want, she I want my sister and like i want my kid and like she was i'm not saying like i i think she was she wanted to be god but i also think at the end like it just shows you like at the end of everyone's life all they want is like their mom mm-hmm. and it was sad and i'm well, glad her wants kids to be but like Her mom kind of failed her also in the last days. I mean, she invited her mom out there and her mom did not go. And I thought that was very telling. I thought that was telling that, yeah, her sister is like, if it were me, I would have gone just to like extract. Oh, fully. Or just like for morbid curiosity or closer's sake. Like, I get that her kids didn't want to go. Like, I fully, they're innocent. But I think her sister is like young and able enough to like... I would have just been like, okay, I'm coming. You know, you're not going to get into, <laughs> you're not going to get, you're not going to get what you want for someone like that. It's like, that's like too far gone. It's like those intervention episodes, like late stages of like that's intervention, late ser- like late in the series when they just started finding people who are past the point of no return. And it's like, you kind of just have to let those people do whatever they want to do. That's what it was, really. It was just like it was a rock bottom. Like, what is she going to do? The, her sister's like, you can come here and die. Like, but how fun is that going to be, really? Like, you're going to have, like, you're, there's no saving this person. There's no rerouting their the course of their life. When they were, like, pretending that she was resurrecting, I was like, she's, I literally went, she's back. Like, I was like, maybe she is God. Honestly, that makes me think that they're like the soul is like when they were holding the like elect, like the magnetic stuff. I yeah, I don't like, get what how that I was, was like, working. Is this is her soul actually like leaving her body? Right, like I was very like this proves it. <laughs> In their experience, like it's very real for them i believe like i believe that they believe oh no 100 percent. they're all convinced but i think it was like and then it kind of does become real after a minute like if you believe something enough it'll become real but also like they were abused by her and i think they were it was like an abusive family system which is what she what we learned she went through yeah as a child and it was also just people that want to party a lot no, I, th- I think all that is true, but I think it was like, it was such a great metaphor. It was like an alcoholic family system and it was what she went through as a kid with her stepmother mm-hmm. getting like abused and berated and she was doing that to her followers. Her followers. It was, and she was, I've never seen someone blue before. I've never seen anything like that documentary. No. And the music was so good. I want the soundtrack. Like carrying a corpse around for days the weekend at bernie's her they literally did she was literally like they were like we got to get her going they crossed state lines they camped with her for a month like was she starting not to a month like wasn't it like a month no it was like 12 10 oh. to 12 days all right well like half a month two weeks yeah i'm like what was, was this it thinking father Maybe god was just chilling in the tent with her i think he f-ed her dead body i do too and i, I think, got i got i think maybe they, a few of them did 
He, d- I definitely was like, this man has f- a corpse. Him and FM did. FM seems a little more sensitive. Like, I don't know, but maybe, maybe FM. they tag teamed. FM's kind of hot. That's a very much you journey thing Sorry. that you can reckon with. All right. All right. I Ms. like Father all right. God. All right, Keith Raniere. Yeah, what? That's my, <laughs> That's I own that. Journey. I stand in my truth. <laughs> yeah, you can throw that back in my face. I'd still f- him. Damn. Well. Well. Let's get into another cult. The cult of Salt Lake City. I'm Carrie. I'm Lara. And you're listening to Sexy, Sexy Unique, Unique Podcast. Podcast. Salty, Salty Utah, Utah Queens. Queens. This is a show. This is what happens when you have not one, but five mother gods in one show. Mary is actually mother god. She is. Um, I just have to say right off the bat, she looked, she's never looked better than in this episode. What was that? Her bob was literally... I've never seen I such went, an avant-garde <laughs> bob haircut in my life. I was like, what What are the what are the There's angles? a long piece. There's a short piece. There, it serves different angles from different angles. It's like, what is the haircut? She was literally like... It was literally giving like art it, pop. It's my a shapeshifter pop. haircut. My art bob could mean anything. It was fully like, who is this person? What are these lengths? Just when you thought you had put your finger and like nailed what the bob was, no. she would turn her head and it <laughs> would become a new haircut entirely. Um, Angie has Heather over. Angie looked really good in this moment. Mm-hmm. I was like, I liked the simple, like she wasn't wearing like Barbarella. And they sort of recap post Pioneer Woman luncheon. And talk about Monica and her many personalities. Heather's realizing that Monica is just Jen Shaw 2.0. And I'm like, okay, yeah. Maybe scarier because she's far more manipulative. And like she is like has an ability to mirror people. I think it's like the LD effect. Like Monica knows how to turn it on and then like relate to people. She's a charmer. And She's the way a charmer. Jen was charismatic, but she wasn't, she was so like on at all times. Well, she was a rager. So like she, like she would fly off the handle more frequently and it was like more toxic. Oh, apparently the word is that Jen is getting Elizabeth Holmes in like top tip top ab shape in prison. She's like coaching her fitness journey. I'm like, who are if these true, so- incredible, but I like don't believe that. I don't either. Who I are these that they're probably in like solitary confinement, <laughs> like begging for food and like are not allowed to speak to each other. I, I mean, Jen is like putting on, she is producing theater in jail. Allegedly. Yeah, I wonder. She's probably like rotting in a cage somewhere. Who are these sources? I don't know, but I'm like, this says, I'm like, we need to get eyes on the prison industrial complex because they're making it seem like you can go to jail and just like have fun with Jen Shaw and she'll tell you to do a hundred sit ups. Oh my God. Yeah, this is very like. This is prison. prison I'm not buying this at all. See through it. They're getting sexually abused in prison and like being fed moldy bread and being locked in like two by two foot room denied things yeah like yeah. i don't think it's like fun and this is like really orange is the new black i think so for yeah, Jen and, are like aspirational no i mean as much as i do wish that were true i hope that they like i pray that they're living laughing loving and like getting f- shredded but i don't think that that's true um yeah the gen comparison is pretty apt it's, it's interesting and i'm happy that heather's having like lucid realizations coming out of her like Shaw reverie Mm -hmm. she was Jen was very Pied Piper with Heather and Heather was very like she was like I'll replace my the church with Jen Shaw I mean she let Jen like beat her ass and then didn't say a word about it remember her black eye yeah I was traumatized by that that was wild it was wild and it was wild that she continued to lie the lie still continues to this day um, Wild Rose and Justin are coming back from therapy and they're both wearing Gucci. The Gucci twins. And Justin's very congested. <laughs> Justin goes, 
sometimes I'm like, does therapy work or make it worse? I found more clarity with the Marxes and their podcasts than with this therapy. I was like, well, well, that's all you need to know. <laughs> then things take a horrible turn. We, the wild rose goes, I just got the bad news. And I was like, oh my God, like what's happening? Diane Warren. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And she goes, Sherry's being intubated. And I was like, what the f***? And then it goes into this whole backstory, which I also, I mean, the whole thing is awful, but I was like, oh my God, are they about to have like a COVID death on the show? Like I can't take it. Oh, speaking. Of and then it was worse. It was a cancer death. Speaking of. What? Oh, no, I don't want to don't, say Don't. Please don't. Okay. I knew what you were going to say and I, no one wants to hear that. All right. Yeah. I was like, what is the, what are the parameters of Sherry's? situation but she's it just seems like bad parameters she's got cancer yeah she goes so, it's a helpless villain so sad she knows death is here and i was like god whitney these whitney is whitney's going through it mm -hmm. she's in like a personal revolution stage but i'm into it for her because i do think she'll come out the other side and be like much stronger She'll come out the other side. I mean, it, even her voice becoming normal is a huge yeah. She's less step like, forward. She's less like regressive. Yeah, and that's like yep. can often be a sign of like mm -hmm. severe abuse. So I'm happy for her. And then I got like a psychic hit when I was watching this, and I was like, I'm actually excited to watch like her and Justin's divorce fallout. Me too. Like I was like. Oh my God, we're going to get like seasons of like, hopefully a bitter divorce between these two. And then I got like a warm, fuzzy feeling. <laughs> yeah. She, I like how she was saying the therapist was like, it's felt like he was pitting us against each other. <sighs> Shutting me down. I was like, oh, well, that you are in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not spared that even in therapy. Um, Meredith meets Lisa at Toscano, which I, I want to go so bad. We've been there. That was a different one. Toscanova? I think it was a different... I think it was in Park City. She had to go up steps to get in. We didn't have to go up steps. Interesting. We were at like the one in the middle of downtown. Mm, okay. Um, I didn't know it was a chain, but that explains a lot. I think there's just various restaurants in SLC called Toscano or Toscanova. Mm -hmm. Meredith meets Lisa and she walks in and Lisa's waiting at the table and she goes... Meredith goes... I'm here to meet a woman. And she goes, is this the woman in red over there? And then Meredith goes, yes, the lady in red. There she is. Meredith is unveiling a new jewelry collection called Plated. And she's explaining, Lisa's A, not impressed, which I love. And Meredith's explaining to her, like, she's like, the jewelry collection is called Plated because it's all plated. And Lisa goes, oh, cool. Yeah, I was like, Good one. She, also, their waiter was hot, and Meredith, Meredith clocked him. No, really? Like, yeah, they they were both a little. They were at Meredith um, posted on Instagram. I saw like it was like the post for plated, and it had some. Mo the creative direction was insane, mm. but I thought that the model was supposed to be Meredith, and I was taken aback. But for a quick moment. You're and then like, I realized, like, oh, no, she just, like, cast a model and had a shoot for this, like, collection of plated. Meredith is also hinting that she's in, like, chronic pain. She's How like, so? She was saying, my joints, I'm going through a lot, I'm feeling pain, and my aches. I was like, uh-oh. You know what can cause a lot of inflammation is plastic surgery. That's true. And, like, plastic surgery recovery mm -hmm. can cause a lot of inflammatory flare-ups just saying lisa meredith confronts lisa about telling whitney that um meredith was threatening angie yeah lisa doesn't want meredith to threaten people and say things like i could ruin their life and lisa and meredith goes the very attorney route she goes I yes, of course I could ruin someone's life. You could ruin someone's life. Anyone on earth could ruin someone's life. I'm like, okay. That's, <laughs> it's like that's not where I would have taken this. Yeah. 
Um, and she goes, and you were saying the same things about Monica? And Lisa goes, no, I was just saying there was like a lot of low hanging fruit with Monica where I could just troll her about like, AKA like her life is Yeah. <laughs> and she goes, that's just truth. And Meredith goes, well, that's the same thing of what I was saying. I wasn't threatening anyone. I could say you're threatening Monica. I'm not clear on Sweeney Marks. I did like when um, she called, she was like, Monica's a b but Meredith is deceptive. Yeah, I'd rather take like a b over a deceiver any day or like someone who makes those kinds of threats mm. I find to be really calculated and creepy. Yeah, I'm like, if you're going to say it, then just say it. Don't sit here and lord things over people and make them like you're trying to like make people live in fear of you. And I think that that's disgusting. I do like that anytime that's the sort of thing about Meredith is brought up. They, they great graciously give us or generously give us the clip of her saying rumors and nastiness. Can we go there ass? about the husband? The rumors and the nastiness. She's Liza Minnelli. She is. Um, Mary is at home having a lovely slice of carrot cake. Mm -hmm. And Wait, Monica comes that, over. Meredith, Meredith tells Lisa, she goes, let me be clear. I am not the one bringing the tornado through. And I went, what? And Lisa literally goes, okay. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Sometimes I'm like, ah, she's back. Like Meredith is back with us. And then her like pills kick in <laughs> and she said something so completely off the wall. I'm like, she's gone once again. Yeah. I'm not the, I'm one. Not the one bringing the tornado through. It's a twisted of not my making. Mary. Yeah, I don't. But do you think she's even like cognizant of when she says i maybe she doesn't remember I, making like threats i think in that case with angie she was absolutely blackout drunk like that was she yeah. was wasted that night and she sort of has admitted to that i don't think she knew what she was talking about i think she was saying something almost in like drunk psychosis and now is like now knows that what she said in that state was like kind of bad and sounded really so now she's like, she's going into like a denial that goes beyond just like, oh, I was, I don't know what I was saying. I was drunk. She's very interesting because you sometimes think that she like knows what's going on and then she acts in a way that is like so opposite that. Well, I, she's a great lawyer. She's just Is she a great lawyer? Because lawyers have to pretend like they know what's going on too. <laughs> and have to like play the game and like it's a lot of performing and pretending. But and... she does only up to like she plays the game like ten to fifteen percent where you're like, okay, and then the way that she handles a situation is so piss poor that you're like, Don't you understand that you look insane right now? Like she doesn't she comes across like a crazy person yeah well that's probably why she switched to jewelry yeah um yeah mary has monica over which i thought was strange and i loved they're good together they belong um, together i saw mary being interviewed by teddy mellencamp on some red carpet and she hinted that she's part of a new duo who Mary was talking about Monica, I think. She didn't say her name. She goes, you'll just have to watch the reunion, but you see it. They have good energy. Like, they make the most sense together of anyone. I think that Monica needs, like, an abusive mother figure, and Mary can be that for her. And then Mary needs a follower, so Monica can be that for her. So I think that they could have a magical friendship. Monica goes, wow, I've never been in this neighborhood. And Mary goes, I've been here 21 years. I was like... Imagine being Mary's neighbor, like a longtime neighbor of Mary. She's probably said two words to you in two decades. She's positively girlish with this wig. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I was like pausing the TV, trying to really understand the architecture of the haircut. I loved it. Me too. I want her to wear that every day. It was like a style icon moment. 
she offers Monica cake and Monica eats it and goes, oh, this is so, she's so kissing. I just love it. She's oh, mm, this is so good. Did you bake it? And Mary goes, no, I didn't bake it. I bought it. I bought it. I don't <laughs> bake. It's amazing. She goes, you think I bake in this? I want to watch them. Like I could watch like Mary and Monica take Manhattan. They should go on a road trip. They should go on a road trip together. Um, Pawn them off on each other and let them get into like hijinks. I do love that uh, Mary, like this is like a a natural progression from like that other scene when Monica was like, ooh, pizza sounds like a good idea. And Mary went, get your own. And Mary, and Mary, and she went, okay, yes. Like she's just, she's so subservient and like it's it's just perfect they're like soulmates and my and mary does give her some good advice Mm -hmm. she's like you just have to accept lisa for who she is and monica's like okay you're right and mary's like you know all her her advice always comes with some unhinged tinges but she is right she's just saying like you gotta just like you have to let lisa be lisa you're not gonna change the queen of sundance Mm mm-hmm so there's no point in trying. You and can we, only change yourself. And then we cut to her. She's like, you can't have grudges. And then we cut to grow up little girl. <laughs> I love it. Why does she hate Whitney so much? She just always has. You're, you called me a pornographer. Pornography. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she just is triggered by her. Some people just get under someone's skin. I think she's annoyed by Whitney. Fair. I think she, there's a part of her that's like intrigued by her, but also hates her. Do you know Maybe what I mean? it's also, this is true I'm armchair psychology, but the like childhood abuse, mm-hmm. like I feel like they probably have common ground. They see something in each other. Mary probably sees something in Whitney. You mean when she was a child bride? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's like sometimes you just hate people that have the a similar experience to you because it reminds you of like your worst life moments or like a worst version of yourself. Literally, there was a guy in college who was openly mean to me. He was in our, my circle. And then the last night of graduation before we all left campus, like it was the night after, he pulled me into his room and said, I'm gay. And I said, OK, I know that. And he goes, that's why I've been mean to you. And I was like. I knew that too, <laughs> but it was like, it, it's, it was just, it was almost comical because it was like, damn. All right. Yeah. A lot of wasted time, but. He was the Mary to your Whitney. Mm-hmm. Um, Sherry passes and Whitney says that she's still going to go to Meredith's jewelry event. She goes, Sherry would go. She goes, if I, I was like, wait. <laughs> so the way I- that Sherry, Whitney started putting a lot of words in Sherry's mouth. I was like. Hmm. Wild Rose. She goes, Sherry would really want me to go to the party and support my friends. And then they're at the party and Whitney's like, I don't know whether or not I'm going to drink today. Should I? And then someone's like, sure, do it. And she goes, you're right. Sherry would want me to have a drink. I was like, okay. Like, Sherry's now let's, her... Like, let's not go there. <laughs> Sherry's her like Robin Williams galactic. <laughs> Robin wants me to drink, so I'm going to drink. Her Jermaine. Yeah. Jermaine is one of my favorites <laughs> that gets like pulled into the mix. Who's Jermaine? Jermaine, one of the Galactics. Oh, right. It was Robin and Jermaine. Robin was all over her. But Robin was the one. Mm-hmm. What you. do you think his family thinks of this? They need to know. They must know. I'll look up his, do- his daughter. I think his daughter follows me. Well. I'll reach out to her. Be like. What's going on? What do you make of this? Yeah. Do you think Robin got in touch with them she probably just feels bad um lisa takes jack to modern mormon menswear which i'm like i must go there they had some sharp looking clothes Mm -hmm. and it's a good business idea i had a moment where i was like i've been annoyed at jack's ungrateful ass for this season but in this moment i realized that he really does love his mom yeah, he's just a surly teen. Um, I had a moment where I was like, I actually like can't get over the fact that he's willingly going on a two-year-long mission. To spiritually colonize people? I don't understand 
what that is about. No. It's like not fun or chic. Yeah. Like it would be one thing if, <clears throat> you know, you're going to like a silent retreat somewhere or like you go to like become enlightened by mm-hmm. like someone else's Mother God. religion. Yeah. yeah. Like joining Mother God the cult for two years would be more interesting to me. I would rather do that than like go on a Mormon mission. But like, I also just can't imagine being feeling so called to like serve a God that I'm like, I'm going to give up two years of my life to go like tell people about this thing. And he's been radicalized. But is there some sort like is this just a thing that like teenagers do because they get to like low key f- and suck and party the whole time? I don't know. Anyone who's been on a mission, let us know how it really goes down. Because then I had a feeling where he's like, he's just looking for something to get himself out of a rut. Because there was something where he said he was like, when I come back, I'll feel like more grateful for like the stuff that you guys give me or like happier about the state of my life. And I was like, okay, like I, that's like relatable being like disillusioned with your Maybe life he- and then feeling like, okay, I have to go like do something radical to pull myself out of this so that I'm more grateful on the other side. I think he's like, I need to get away from my mom. I think he loves her, but he feels like very smothered by Lisa and controlled. Which isn't, I'm not, I'm not, agree- I think he's, that's what he's telling himself. He's like, I need to get away and be my own man kind of thing. And I think, I'm sure he's been like brainwashed a little. Yeah. I just don't see what's like the fun draw. I I did want a Lisa, a young Lisa origin story because he says, I mean, look what you were doing when you were 18. You said you were getting in limos with Russian mobsters and Lisa goes, <laughs> I was like, Where's this story? Add it to the young reboot list. Lisa at Tunnel. Young Fuki. And then once that blows up, young Lisa. Lisa was like a club kid. She was like at Tunnel and like hanging out with like Russian, has, Brooklyn Russian mobsters. She still has monsters. like cocaine in the club energy. Mm-hmm. Um, Monica meets Heather at a bar before plated. And she brings a box of something. Booze. And... <laughs> She apologizes to Heather about how she sort of ruined the entire <laughs> luncheon and how she ruined the surprise of Bermuda. And she was a Debbie Downer and she's completely changed her whole. It's very, it's freaky. This was when I was like, she is LD's daughter through and through. She sits down and she goes, So I won't be going to Bermuda. And then Heather goes, okay. Barbados? Or Bermuda. Bermuda. Mm. She goes, I won't be going to Bermuda. And Heather goes, Okay. And she goes, I'm just kidding. And Heather was like, Oh, fuck. Yeah, and they're like, okay, we're going to go on this trip. She's so sweet and gracious and humble. She's she's, too sweet. I don't trust it. And she's talking about, like, how much Bermuda is going to mean to her to reconnect with her family. And she's just buttering Heather up. And she's like, I'm so sorry about everything. So Heather, of course, is, like, believing it because this is what she does. Um, And then we got to the Marx family getting out of the car and it's like the slowest exit I've ever seen. They just Brooks, Seth and Meredith spit positively spill out of a car. Mm -hmm. Mm. Whitney shows up to Meredith's party and goes right for Meredith. And then she's like, Sherry passed, but everyone's very like sweet with Whitney. Yeah. Meredith gives her a big hug. Meredith of course loves to jump at a chance to grieve. So she, Mm -hmm. She's genuinely like, I'm so sorry. She's like the perfect person to go to mm-hmm. when you're like racked with grief. Whitney goes, I don't want to put a rain cloud over your event. And she goes, never. Yeah. And that's when Whitney is like, I don't know if I should drink. What should I do? And then she goes, Sherry would want me to. And I was like, here we go. Mm-hmm. The Galactics are weighing in. Yeah. Um. Heather makes a beeline for Whitney when she walks in with Monica and she immediately hugs her and is apologizing. She knows about Sherry and Whitney's so stiff with Heather. It's very strange. What's going on? Did you ever get, did you watch the like finale or figure out why they hated each other? It's because of that. I think it's because of that falling out they had with when Heather was yet, when they got into that fight, when they went on that trip, Jen's last girl's trip. 
Oh, because it was because Heather was like not being honest. She was like, "You're you were with me when they told us that Barlow was blowing people for jazz tickets." Oh, think, the one, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. it was like a mounting thing. I think they, I think they just had tension, and I think the bad. I think something. I almost like my dark theory is that Whitney's like Heather has steal, stolen my identity. Like mm. I am the bad Mormon of the family. And Heather, here is my cousin taking my valor. Yeah, stolen bad Mormon valor. And she's sort of like, I'm actually like the one who like. I That's like, a really good theory. I had an affair. I like rocked the community. I was like sneaking under office desks. Like I ruined, <laughs> I ruined my, my family and he, he ruined his. And I wrote a letter excommunicating myself. I like body paint. Like I've like gotten out of the church. I'm like working through like childhood trauma. I'm like really, I'm the baddest Mormon here. And here you are writing a book and like saying, saying, saying you're out of the church, but you're still like basically espousing like you're, you're fixated on it still. And Whitney's, I think she's just over Heather. Yeah. She goes, she goes, just compartmentalize. You can do it. I was like, that's Kind of good advice. It's a girl boss advice. Meredith has a speech where she's like lit up with a screen behind her. and It was very De Palma. Mm-hmm. Her speech was wild to me. I want to thank Seth for supporting me through this whole process. <laughs> His like, oh, shucks, who me act. I was like, ooh. Yeah, was I weird. was like, God, you guys, like, I want you to stay f- in my mind, but you're making it difficult. Thank you to Seth for inspiring me to keep going with Planted. Plated. I guess like is any other housewife doing jewelry? Ramona had oh, jewelry, Kelly Benson. She? she has a jewelry line. Remember she was making the owl jewelry? I don't know if she still does it, but I guess Ramona had some jewelry, but it wasn't oh, yeah, like she had, she had religious jewelry. Yeah. I, I mean, I so. guess smart. I just don't know who's like buying this i'm sure a lot of people are but i'm like who though show yourselves no one that i want to know yeah um monica and lisa make up monica this was when i was truly crouching in horror at her entire apology and then like her being like so engaged with yeah. like every i was like this is disingenuous i don't trust it at all but i think lisa got that and was sort of playing along a little mm-hmm. she goes you've gone through some trauma from what i understand <laughs> i was like i'm obsessed with you and then monica gives the girlies all a bottle of rum i think right mm-hmm. and she's and like donuts it's bermuda pastries and rum and she's like, this is what I should have done at the luncheon. This trip is very important to me. My great grandparents like helped build up Bermuda and my grand my grandmother was born there. So it's like very important to me and my Portuguese heritage in Bermuda. And I still have uncles and aunts there. So this is gonna be a big like trip for me. Wow. I was like, damn. I was like, wow, she's really getting a lot of like screen time over this Bermuda trip. And then Whitney goes up to Whitney seeks comfort from Brooks first, who is like crying. I was like, the two of them could make magic together. Yeah, I think they'd have fun. I think Whitney is like, I love this guy. I know. They seem like very like I was like, what's their relationship like? To me, out of all the women, uh, maybe Meredith because she because of Brooks. But I feel like Whitney's the one that actually is like friends with gay people and doesn't just like keep them around as like pets Mm -hmm. which i think like i kind of feel like heather has that vibe a little no i think i think whitney's like genuinely a fat hag yeah yeah definitely you know how like there's a lot of housewives that like keep especially in areas like that aren't as like or who are like, I love the gays, but yeah. like when it comes to like day to day, like yeah. they're not like texting gay people. No, I think Whitney's like in the, th- in the weeds with the gays. Mm-hmm. And so I think she and Brooks like have a connection. Yeah. I'm liking Whitney more and more. Me too. I like this stripped down Wild Rose and. 
I love the Wild Rose. I like the evolution of working, like being one way and then like dismantling everything and kind of losing everything and being like emotionally raw and then rebuilding is a very... That's appealing. I think it's also a very like late 30s or in your 30s kind of struggle. I like that she is... I love her boundaries. Mm-hmm. She seems to have like gotten like from what I've seen as the seasons, like her boundaries are getting clearer and clearer. And I like that she doesn't really pretend like if she doesn't really, ha- isn't she, if she's not really vibing with someone, she really won't like pretend like she's not vibing with Heather mm-hmm. and she's not pretending to be like, oh, oh, you know what I mean? Like she's co- sort of just like, okay, I just like, it's a very appealing to me. Yeah. I'd be friends with her. I think I would too. And then Whitney goes beelines for Lisa because she and Lisa have like forged a friendship this season. And she's like, why did you go immediately to Heather and like give her a gift and be excited and then like not tell me that you're sorry about my friend dying? Why aren't you comforting me? I texted you this morning. Like I'm, I'm here right now. We're friends. We're like actually friends. And she basically was like, you're not friends with Heather. Like, you're friends with me. Yeah. Lisa, once again, continues to fascinate. Because I'm like, she comes across badly in this moment. Like, lacking empathy. Like, not understanding, like, how to be there for a friend in their time of grief. But I also am like, there's something really relatable about that. Well, Whitney tells her what happened. And then she goes, no, that's not what happened. And then she goes, I, I'm a good person. I'm not a bad person. And I'm like, oh my God, I relate to that. I think Lisa was a little girl in that moment. Well, also it's like she she doesn't want to get like aired out. I think there's a Lisa Barlow that exists when the cameras yeah. are off that is like friendly and has empathy yeah. and like blah, blah, blah. But then there's the Lisa Barlow who's like performing for the cameras and just trying to like keep up appearances for the sake of being on a TV show. And that's where it gets crossed wires because like for the sake of a TV show, you're going to be like, Oh, Heather. Oh my God. Like, here you go. Like blah, blah, blah. And like, maybe you feel this is projecting, but I'm like, maybe you just feel like, Oh, our friendship that's happening like off camera. is like, I want to, I don't want to have that moment of like comforting my friend on camera. Like I'd rather do that off camera because that's like our truest relationship. So maybe it feels disingenuous to her to like comfort someone like that. I I also think that maybe Lisa is just someone that has a hard time knowing what to say in the face of death. Yeah. I think she probably has. I mean, I have like, I like don't know what to say. Yeah. Um, And then also she's like terrified of being called out or perceived as being like a bad person, but her actions make her seem like that. She, I got a, I got like a, of Lisa as a child and her mom going, you're a bad, bad girl. And Lisa going, no, I'm a good girl. I'm a good girl. (laughs) No, I'm a good girl. I'm a good person. No mother. I'm no mother. Mother, I don't love that. I don't love that, mother. I'm actually, you love me. You love that. Not that. Her going, your friend died. Are you okay? <laughs> I think Whitney. I'm like, Wild Rose, come on. I think I think she was a little drunk and I think she was just, she just needed someone to yell at because she was upset. Yeah. And I think. And she can't yell at Heather, so. Because she, because Heather and her don't have the same. Heather will use it against her somehow. I think it is interesting. I do. I think Lisa could have played the game a little bit better and been like more comforting. Mm -hmm. But I do think it is an interesting point that like the like part of the reason Whitney is mad is because she went to Heather and like did that first. Yeah. I can't keep a mental calculator of everything that's going on. I've got a lot going on. My son's leaving. I love it. I just continue to be obsessed with her. She's the enigma. And I like her yelling at the entire crew. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, 
mics off don't even come near me with that do not put that on me again did you see like scenes from next week yeah yeah i love i, I just I like love when she flips out i love this new it happens since all reality shows now that people are now take this off get this off me I'm, I'm leaving don't come near me it's incredible i continue to think this is the really the mvp of the whole franchise yeah they're really doing something fantastic on this show they're doing what robich which wishes they were doing mm -hmm. should we do a cult shout out yeah sarah elizabeth sarah elizabeth Lucy from London. Lucy from London. Brooke Johansson. Brooke Johansson. Brittany Ryan Weiss. Brittany Ryan Weiss. Danielle McMillan. McMillan. Lady Swamp, which gives, gives no, no f Lazara. Lazara. Mazatov. Mazatov. Mary. Mary. Eliza Twaddle. Eliza Twaddle. Maisie McKearney. Maisie McKearney. Mike Earhart. Earhart. Carrie Oaks. Carrie Oaks. Sharon Baum. Realtor. Realtor. Courtney Kesselman. Kesselman. Owsley. Owsley. Mariah Kay. Kay. Kathy West. West. Rochelle Martino. Rochelle Martino. Kit Moore. Kit Moore. Hillary. Hillary. Orlanda. Orlanda. Nick Sedaris. Nick Sedaris. Emily. Emily. Kim Lucas. Lucas. And Jeffrey Pradama. 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 Guys, thank you so much for watching on YouTube. And if you don't know, you now you know that our YouTube channel, Sex Unique Podcast on YouTube, is popping off. You can see every episode live i guess on there and this week we're not releasing a beverly hills episode but stay tuned while we Deliberate. figure some things out Ta -ta. bye